Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Breaking Down the Charts. Uh, this week has been an incredible week of trading. There's been some massive moves in the market. The Discord is absolutely going off. There's been a lot of traction in here, people sharing their ideas about where they think Bitcoin and Ethereum's price is going, as well as the smaller cap coins that they've been trading, which we're going to cover in this episode as well. We're also going to be covering gold and silver trade that we've been tracking. Um, did a massive post in our Forex and Commodities chat not too long ago. Uh, actually great to see a lot of the members already had been trading gold and silver historically. Um, holding that as a storage of value assets, similar to how a lot of people are holding Bitcoin at the moment. Um, at the moment, basically, I just want to run through some of the chats that we've had. Uh, we've had some really great small cap coins being recommended uh, with huge moves just over the weekend as well. So some big wins by the community. Um, one of the coins people are watching is Pearl, um, Perlin, um, which I'm actually going to cover at the end of this episode on, on the charts. And another coin that we're watching is Compound Coin, which is a newer coin. Both of these coins are in the DeFi space. Uh, and which has got a lot of hype and FOMO around as well. So be careful. There's obviously risk on there as well. If things ch turn or um, people get less confident or the market starts to turn, some of these coins can, can crash a lot. Um, so you're playing with small money if you are investing in these coins. Uh, but nevertheless, there's always great opportunities there as well. And we're going to cover that on the charts. Let's get into Bitcoin. So Bitcoin made a massive move. It's been getting a bit of bad name that it's uh, a stable coin. As you can see, it's been tracking along just between 10,000 and 9,500. Uh, but it's made a massive, massive move over the weekend, pushed straight through the 10,000 US dollar mark. Before I went to bed last night, it was kind of testing. It kind of broke to 10,200, went straight back down to 9,900 and to 9,950 area. Uh, but now we've broken through with confidence uh, and it's at about $10,236 as we speak. Now I've got a bit of a pitchfork here. Uh, this helps me kind of track a market move and the trend it may follow as it starts to trade upwards. Uh, so at the moment we're still in that bottom quadrant or that bottom trend line expecting it to perhaps kind of push along for a little bit, find out whether uh, the bulls are going to take over here and push it through up hopefully towards the 11,000 mark uh, or whether or not it'll be smashed back down uh, below 10,000. So really interesting week this week. I'll probably do a mid-week video again uh, if anything major happens but of course best place to keep on top of everything is in the mining store discord. Uh, we post here as soon as something happens. If I miss it, someone else has covered it. We've got members from all around the world um, which are keeping their eyes on this market and going to keep you up to date. So if you're trading, well worth jumping in here. Um, you know, you're going to meet a lot of people. There's hundreds and hundreds of members as you can see on the side here. Uh, a lot of these people have been trading this market for a long time. Don't try and do all this on your own. You just simply will not be able to keep up to date with it. We've got a massive team now of all eyes on this and people have been doing it for far longer uh, than a lot of people out there. So definitely jump on board here. The link is in the description to sign up. Uh, you get a seven day free trial anyway, there's nothing to lose there uh, and there's some really exciting times right now. Um, even in the Bitcoin trading channel, you know, people are sharing their opinions. Uh, we're, all, we're really non-biased as well. You've even got Wolfenstein here um, mentioning that things are really over, overbought and it could get slapped down um, really quickly. So just be careful. Uh, you're going to get these kind of warnings as opposed to, you know, you saying that Bitcoin's moving and getting a bit of FOMO and jumping in at the wrong time. So that's probably enough for the Discord. Let's jump over to the charts and let's get straight into it. So uh, we just covered Bitcoin there. You know, I'm going to keep my eyes on it. I'll put anything out if, if it comes through. But right now, things are looking very bullish. I just want to tap into the gold and silver trade that I have um, been going on since around about March this year. So, you know, back around in, in March, the the gold silver ratio was at all time highs. One ounce of gold was getting you 125 ounces of silver. Ridiculous. This has never really been seen before. Um, historically, gold silver ratio tends to track at around this kind of 60 level um, along this regression line, and it's been getting higher and higher ever, ever since. Uh, and then at this point in time, I kind of recognize, um, you know, that there was a really good opportunity to, to buy into silver, which is also seen as a storage of value asset. Uh, the reason why I was looking at storage of value assets is because we're leading into a time of negative real interest rates, where inflation is actually higher than the interest that you're earning at the bank, and you're slowly and slowly being kind of pushed out of the market. Your purchasing power is is diminishing, and the people tend to flock towards storage of value assets during this time. So um, I was looking at buying gold, uh, but I thought gold was a little bit overboard it had a massive run um, between now and even the GFC in 2008 um, gold had still performed really well whereas silver uh, had kind of been uh, smashed in you know the price had really been suppressed over these years now the reason why silver had been suppressed or from the research that I could um, put together myself was because JP Morgan had been hoarding uh, a lot of silver uh, they actually bought up back in around about 2011 close to 150 million ounces of silver this actually allowed JP Morgan 
to short larger than what the restrictions on the market were set at. So say, for example, you're only allowed to short 5,000 contracts because they were holding so much silver, they had a reason to be able to short more than that because um, they need to be able to hedge their positions. And they've been kind of shorting the market ever since. Uh, now, obviously, with the price getting so close to zero or $15, $15 an ounce, um, you know, there's not really that much benefit to short down to zero. There's only $15 to make. It looks like they've kind of pulled off their short positions now. Uh, and now silver's going on a, on a massive run. So it's up to $24 now. Uh, so congratulations, obviously, to those guys that follow that, I suppose, recommendation back in back in March and, and bought up some silver. This is this is the buy signal that we had out here uh, at $15. Uh, and now it's all the way up at $24, which is uh, a solid around about 50 or, or so percent game. All right. So keeping an eye on this is a really nice trade. Uh, gold, on the other hand, which you know can control the, the commodities market, uh, is pushed through its all-time high. So this is really big news. We've never seen gold at this price ever before. Okay, It's at 1931, pushed straight through that 1920 mark. If that keeps running, then we can expect silver would probably follow with it. Uh, and we'll track this ratio here to see which asset is performing better than the other. At the moment, because this is gold against silver, silver is um, performing better. Uh, the lower where this goes, it means that silver is, is performing better. So what I'm probably going to be doing is looking to actually sell my silver into gold um, at around about, probably the first point I would like to sell is, is between 80 and 70. So close to 70, I'll probably look to cash out half of my silver position into gold. Um, and then if it breaks, breaks down even further to this 50 level, um, I might even convert all of it across. Uh, this regression kind of shows us that, you know, historically, it should kind of bounce back up um, and, and head more towards this long term regression channel uh, where the bottom of it is the ratio being at 82 and the top of it being 104. So really nice trade there. Good stuff to those guys that got on board with that. Um, and yeah, we're going to be covering this in the breaking down the, the charts episodes uh, coming forward as well. Moving on to Ethereum. So Ethereum has gone absolutely crazy. We're looking at the Ethereum US dollar chart right now. Um, reason for this is because a lot of the people that are buying Ethereum are actually new buyers right now. There's obviously heaps of people who are existing in the cryptocurrency market um, and maybe selling their Bitcoin for Ethereum or they're holding US Tether and they're converting that into Ethereum. Um, but yeah, right now, you know, a lot of people are, who are watching this breaking down the charts are actually have fresh fiat or Australian dollars or US dollars that they want to put into the market. And so this ch uh, chart here is probably a little bit more relevant. So again, if we just cover this action here that we didn't really know about before, you know, the, the last episode, things were kind of tracking on pretty stable. Um, you know, we were in this upward channel and we can clearly see this this line here on the $253 mark was a, a clear resistance line that had been tested back in May uh, 2019. Um, you know, it broke up and above and then broke below. It was tested again back in February and uh, of 2020. Uh, and now we've clearly just broken straight out of that level. So this is a really bullish sign. Um, I put a pitch, pitchfork on this one as well to try and see uh, where we may track along. We're sitting right along the middle regression line right now. Um, so I'm expecting that we may get a little bit of a pull off or perhaps we'll push straight through. I think the next target for uh, Ethereum against the US dollar is around the 368 level. Um, that's where the all time high was back in 2019, just here, okay? Um, and the 2017 crash uh, saw a capitulation at $367. So I'm expecting a bit of resistance on that mark there around the 367, 368 level. Um, yeah, but up until then, you know, this has legs to run and I think Ethereum definitely can push through. Obviously, understanding the narrative that um, big, uh, Ethereum is going into the uh, 2.0, uh, which is where staking is going to occur, people are going to be locking up lots of 32 Ethereum. Uh, based on my research, we're expecting around 60 to potentially 80% of the coins available on the market to be locked up um, in nodes come 2.0. Um, now, if there's 60 to 80% less supply on the market, uh, we can only imagine what that is going to do to price. Uh, we saw the exact same thing happen for Loki. Um, we're looking at the Loki chart here now uh, when Loki went into uh, staking you know, around about this time here in September, around about October 2018. As soon as that supply locked up, the price just escalated substantially. It's also another reason why Loki's prices run so much here because when the price starts to run, there's not much supply uh, for people to actually sell their coins. That It's locked for 30 days or 15 days at a time. And so anyone that's wanting to buy is trying to buy off a very small market supply, okay? And so they have to take whatever price they can get and 
that pushes the price up drastically. So a same kind of narrative I think will happen with this uh, Ethereum trade. Um, and I just think that Ethereum is probably one of the best projects out there. It's got the most developers on it. Uh, and yeah, definitely well worth having some exposure to, particularly if you're already in the cryptocurrency market. Um, looking at Ethereum USD, which is what we, uh, sorry, Ethereum based against the Bitcoin. Uh, this is a really interesting one to see, to see which one is outperforming the other. At the moment, Ethereum, despite Bitcoin breaking through the $10,000 mark, Ethereum is actually performing even better. Uh, and it is actually broken out of this upward trend that we were talking about as well. So I honestly think that we uh, might see Ethereum push all the way to this 0 0.03 level where um, one one Bitcoin will get, sorry, one Ethereum will get you 0 0.03 of a Bitcoin. Um, beyond there, we could start seeing a new trend being formed. Uh, right now, we're above all of the uh, moving averages. So this is really bullish territory for Ethereum. We, we're push well above on the RSI as well. So we may expect some sideward action or even a bit of a pullback. Nevertheless, things are looking very strong. Um, oh, Loki obviously had a, a big pullback. That's well expected, guys. Um, when we go on massive runs, I mean, the biggest of it was 183% over a couple of days. <clears throat> we got to expect to have some pullbacks, and, and, and rightfully so. Uh, Loki has had a bit of a pullback now as well. Um, so for those of you who are looking to get Loki positions, I still think you might be able to wait a little bit longer. I think we may pull back a little bit further, understanding that a lot of people, uh, when this rally started, who had nodes may have actually put a... Um, a uh, unstaking command in um, to deregister their nodes so they can sell their positions. Uh, I think there could be a bit of sell action coming up over the next kind of week or so and that could enter a good opportunity for you guys who are sitting on the sidelines to get involved. Having said that, they are getting into the DeFi space. This was really, really big news. I'm actually doing an interview with Simon Hardman on Wednesday, so tune in for that and you'll get more information about what Loki is actually doing. Uh, we'll definitely cover a couple more points that we covered in our first episode with Simon uh, about their privacy message, private messaging service as well as we're going to be covering um, Loki net uh, but the focus of it is going to be their new and new position to enter in the DeFi space which is absolutely massive news we're going to talk a little bit more about the DeFi, DeFi space and another project that we're looking at uh, Perlin uh, but we'll cover off a couple other coins first RSR, really great coin. Um, they're in kind of the stable coin um, in industry. Uh, they're rumored to have some partnerships with PayPal, which could come to into fruition maybe in the next one, two, or even three years. Um, solid team behind this project. Uh, I really like it. Uh, some of the most trusted sources that I have for information in the cryptocurrency industry um, have, have recommended this coin to me, uh, and I've been kind of trading it ever since. Now, I did buy in back down here, uh, which you guys remember from previous episodes, and sold it up at around here. I missed out on this next run, um, but nevertheless, it's definitely come back down as I was saying over the previous weeks that I thought it was going to. Um, and now I'm kind of ready to, to take some more positions. I do think this can fall a, a fair bit further. Um, I'm not really ready to take positions yet, although it does look like it's showing a bit of... Um, bullish territory on this support line here i do think that we are going to break through and i'm actually looking for an entry uh down on this 71 sats level down here okay so i'll definitely put the call out obviously the first call is going to go out in the discord for those that are involved it will go straight into the altcoin trading channel when i take my first position um nevertheless you know I may be able to put a video together um but yeah can't put put enough stress that it's important to be in here guys this is where you're going to get the information firsthand Moving on from RSR, <clears throat> we got Digibyte. Uh, I was hoping Digibyte was about to make that leg through the ascending wedge uh, pattern that we got here. When we get an ascending wedge, te what tends to happen is we get a rally and then we start getting consolidation uh, where you've got a flat at the top and, and a trend line at the bottom. And, and eventually what kind of happens is we get to the end of this triangle pattern and we break out to the top side. Now the breakout is usually the same kind of uh, size as, as what the run up towards the top of the channel was, okay? So that's a 238% run there. Uh, and what we would usually expect in a breakout is to get another kind of leg, a, the similar um, amount of uh, sats up on, on, on the top side. Now, it clearly has kind of broken out there. It, we could have pushed through, but it looks like it was a little bit early and, and the ascending channel actually indicates that as well. So I do think we're going to downtrend towards the bottom of this trend line again and then retest it here, uh, at which point I'm hoping that we'll kind of break out. So just sitting tight there, I'm mining Digibyte as a miner. Uh, I'm not taking new positions but I'm constantly mining new coins every day um, and I'm just holding those positions I'm not actually buying or trading this at the moment just holding these positions and waiting for that breakout at the top at which I'll look to probably sell hopefully closer to this 1.618 fib line at uh, for 
45 um, sat line there, okay? Moving on to Teller. So Teller obviously had a huge run. It's pulled back, just similar to Loki. It's, it's got to happen when the market's overboard. It's got to come back down eventually. We're coming back down to that top trend line that I was cha um, charting. Uh, we're, we're right on this moving average here, which if we check in our settings, is the... 20 um, day moving average. So sitting right on that now, uh, I'm not actually 100% sure what's going to happen here. We may kind of trend a little bit lower to this middle regression line, um, but very good chance that we hold this price here. Uh, we're leading into version two for Teller, uh, and that will be um, a staking requirement of 6,000 TRB per node. Uh, so I do think there could be a bit of demand coming in for the coin, as well as that emission curve is decreasing over time, which is new coins being released into the market. As we know, less supply. Um, means price usually goes up uh, so yeah quite bullish on teller again i'm i'm mining uh, teller um, i'm not actually um, buying and trading it so i'm just kind of holding my um, coins i'm not really selling any off at the moment um, i'm just waiting for you know this kind of next leg up so i'll keep tracking teller i'll let you know if i do sell off any of my mine coins at the moment i'm quite bullish on it i think it's got great tokenomics to keep pushing for further forward perlin so Perlin was a coin that was recommended in our um, community. There was a lot of people, including Gouliding and, and Wolfenstein, who were basically talking about Perlin and um, the, an opportunity here. A lot of the guys had um, already had positions in on it. It looks like they're going to be entering into the DeFi space. This was actually a bit of a leak, and we never really know, you know, leak in quotation marks, uh, you know, how, how valid that is. Um, there's a very good chance it was, you know, potentially a, a deliberate leak to create a bit of hype. Um, but nevertheless, uh, you know, based on on how hard Loki pumped um, by entering into the DeFi space. Um, you know, anyone kind of entering into this DeFi space has got a lot of hype right now. And um, this is purely what we probably call a bit of a punt. Um, you know, I entered in on maybe Thursday or Friday. Um, I'm up about 100% on the trade here. Um, again, if you're in the Discord, you probably would have got on, on this trade as well. Um, should you be entering this trade now, it's really up to yourself. It, you, you do your own research, um, you know, join the groups and, and see what you like about it. Um, honestly, I mean, this is a more of a short-term trade. I'm not really looking to hold this as, as a project like Loki that I really love long-term. Um, you know, probably going to be getting in and out. My target level for those that are interested, if I just zoom out, is at this 1.61 fib line. Probably going to exit a little bit earlier. Um, or if it's looking like it's going to push through, I may hold. Uh, what I tend to do is dollar cost average out of my trades like this. And I put in stop losses. So I don't want to lose that 100% gain that I've had here. So I'll probably put in some entry order sells at around about this price here and just let this run and I'll keep pulling that stop loss up and and, and following up this pump. Um, if the market does dump down, those sell orders will get executed and I'll protect my profits. So again, kind of looking to do that and I'm hoping to kind of track that trade all the way up to this 1.61 FIB line uh, at the 80, 86, um, uh, 8,700 or 600 um, Sat Satoshi level um, so yeah definitely worth if you guys want to follow that up with me uh, it's probably a bit more risky of a trade now it's kind of made its move nevertheless this could keep pumping uh, and it's all time high was well up at 12,000 um, Satoshi Final trade, and I haven't entered this one just yet, um, but definitely tracking along with this one with a couple of uh, the members of the Mining Store Discord, including Grant from Mine Digital and Jules, which is one of our analysts. Um, Compound was a coin that came out originally uh, on the back of this kind of um, uh, yield yield mining that's been going on. I haven't done any of this yield mining, but it's you know very hyped at the moment, uh, and definitely something that you guys could um, have a look into. Uh, nevertheless, this is a project that I think is going to have a really big pump. Now, I'm going to compare this to Teller just to show you how cryptos tend to kind of. Um, perform as they are released into the market. So there's obviously a huge amount of hype if it's successful. They tend to have a massive pump and then they pull back substantially. Uh, and Fibonacci be, is, is a really powerful way to track where they may kind of find support again before they have another run. If we look back on Teller, you can see that it's kind of pumped all the way up here, the exact same pattern, like literally the exact same pattern. They pump up and they start to come down. And then you can use the Fibonacci to, to kind of pick where the bottom of the market will be. Now, um, for Teller, it was about halfway through the zero and 23% line. Uh, for Compound, we're starting to get towards that territory and that's why I put this box here. I'm looking at entering in Compound between 120 sats um, and, and 142. Uh, so yeah, if you guys want to follow along with that, um, 
you're more than welcome to uh, see how see how you go with it. Um, yeah, if this is the first time you've entered in a newer project, this tends to be how I, I find my positions. I never really invest into um, newer projects unless I can get involved in some OTC trades, uh, which are favorable at discount, uh, which we offer to the community sometimes. Um, but yeah, for this one, basically, I just let the pump run, didn't FOMO in, waited for the pullback, patiently waiting, and now I'm looking to enter in around this box here. Hopefully that um, helps you guys. Obviously covered a lot in terms of Bitcoin, <coughs> um, gold, silver, uh, the Ethereum market, uh, and a couple of altcoins that we're trading as well. Uh, the one thing that I do want to mention as well that's been really good is to see um, Bitcoin actually track along with the gold, silver market. Um, you know, it's great to see a correlation to storage of value assets. That's the biggest play for Bitcoin uh, is that it can be seen as a storage of value. There's only ever going to be 21 million Bitcoins available on the market. Um, and basically, people look at it as a way to protect themselves against inflation. It's obviously a newer way to protect yourself against inflation. Uh, it's a newer asset, blockchain technology, and the rest of it. But nevertheless, it's great to see correlation um, from Bitcoin uh, to assets like gold, uh, which really confirm that storage of value um, play there. Other than that, guys, hopefully that gives you an update. There mo no doubt will probably be another video this week as there's a lot going on in the markets. Uh, can't encourage you more to get into involved with this mining store Discord. We've seen a whole heap of new people come on board. Uh, we've been welcoming them in uh, as the days have gone by. Probably had about 10 or 15 new members, which has been great. Um, you know, a whole heap of people here being, being welcomed in. Um, so yeah, wel you'll obviously be welcomed in. Uh, and if you have any questions, once you do get involved, you can message any of our support team here uh, or even our analysts. Good stuff, guys. Take care.